It might be one of the hottest days of the year. I might be sweating my balls off, but you know, the videos don't stop. Another episode of Attempting Not to Get It Sacked. Welcome back. Whether we stay in the job like longer than episode eight, I, I really don't know. After the first five episodes were done, you know, people probably thought, oh yeah, Proudy's gonna disappear now because he's gonna get sacked and then we're just gonna have no content. Don't worry, don't worry. Like, you know, there's no need to panic. Like, we're fine. We're gonna be all right. Although I'm not gonna be, to be fair, if I don't get through this episode fast enough. <laughs> In the last episode, uh, we uh, got the inevitable board meeting and I, I said to the board that give me a month and I can turn this around. Uh, we then proceeded to draw 0-0 against Sheffield United in the cup. So it's been a great start. Oh, and also because there's not really that many games in January and I'd said I needed a month to turn things around, it means that we're going to focus on every game in the next two episodes. So in this episode, we're going to be taking on Tottenham in the league and then Sheffield United in the FA Cup replay. And then I believe in the next episode, we're going to be taking on Crystal Palace and then Southampton. I can't believe Southampton might be the team that gets me sacked. There are a couple of bits that I need to catch you up on before we move into our first match of the episode against Tottenham. Uh, so the FA Cup fourth round draw was made because obviously we made it in there even though we were absolutely fraudulent against Sheffield United away from home. And if we do manage to get past Sheffield United in the replay, we will be taking on either Cambridge United or Plymouth, uh, who are both in League One. So I kind of wish we got that in the third round. I don't know why they gave us such a difficult time in the third round and then gave us the easier time in the fourth round, but we can't even get through the third round game first. So another bit of big news is in the league is that Sean Dyche has taken over the Crystal Palace hot seat and normally it's not really a news article I focus on because you know why would I give a shit about Sean Dyche and Crystal Palace but obviously they are one of the teams that we're going to be taking on in the next few episodes and you know Sean Dyche may pull off a masterclass to push me closer to the exit door and also, to be honest, Crystal Palace are utter shit. Like, we beat them 2-0. It was the most dominant performance I've seen from us this season. And we've had... That was probably actually the only dominant performance we've had this season. Although, Proudy and Dominant don't really go in the same sentence. What? So I have brought in a new player, even though I may not be able to manage him that much longer. Uh, but I looked at strengthening the midfield because I feel like that is our weakest area. So joining us on loaner from Bayern Munich is Ryan Gravenberch, uh, obviously a player that a lot of you will be familiar with. He's not really playing for Bayern Munich at the moment in the save, so I brought him in on loan. I was actually meant to bring him in on loan in August, but I didn't put it through for some reason. I don't know what I was doing, uh, but he comes in very good player. Hopefully, we'll strengthen that midfield for us. Uh, I'm really annoyed as well because I thought Leeds United's midfielders were actually quite decent. I've realised Calvin Phillips leaving in this save means that the midfield is actually pointless. Like, anyone goes near them and they just disappear. And now we go into our first game of the episode against Spurs at home. And uh, we're going to stick with the 4-3-3 formation that I played against Sheffield United. Uh, but there obviously are a few changes. Stuart Dallas, Robin Cock, Pascal Stroik and James Shackleton will be our back four. With Mark Rocker playing ahead of them in the defensive midfield position. Ryan Gravenberch makes his debut uh, in the Leeds team alongside Mateus Click in midfield. While Jack Harrison, uh, Rafinha and Patrick Bamford will be our front three. It is basically the strongest team I've got available to me. I, I hope we actually do something because we do need a win here. And to be honest, considering looking at the league table, I mean, Spurs are struggling as well. So a win here is very vital for us in the league positions. 16! I am 100% sure Marcelo Bielsa is trying to take the piss out of my team. He's dropped a few of his big players and is essentially playing a second string team against my lead side. It's a league game, for God's sake. Then again, I don't know why I'm complaining, because surely if he weakens his side, it means it gives us a better chance of winning. Then again, I've managed this team for about five months now, and we've been pretty much shit in every game that I've managed. So, you know, it's sort of 50-50, really. But this is essentially the biggest game of the season, because if I don't get at least a draw, I've got absolutely no chance of staying in this job. So I told the team, go out there and prove to the fans that you know what it's like to play for the shirt. And within five minutes, we were 1-0 down because Richarlison scored. Yeah, that's that's just great. That's That's fantastic. Honestly, I, I just give up. I just honestly give up with this side. I don't know what I'm meant to do to win a match. Like, what am I meant to do? Spurs were dominating the first 15 minutes of the match, and Ivan Perisic was then played through by Lucas Moura, but then forced a good save from Melier. And, uh, yeah, at the moment, I haven't seen us get a highlight yet. It's just been all Spurs. And our first highlight of the game came just before half-time as Patrick Bamford played the ball forward to Mateus Click. But instead of running forward into the box, he decided to shoot from 25 yards and Hugo Lloris just caught the ball. You know, it does actually answer the question, why can't I score enough goals? It's because we're doing shit like that. In the second half, I decided to change the formation and decided to bring on Rodrigo for Mateus Click and then move to a 4-2-3-1 formation instead of the 4-3-3 that we'd been playing for 15 minutes and getting absolutely zero success from. And it shows you how 
like this Ryan when I'm bringing on a player who's still not happy with me trying to sell him to Everton in the summer transfer window. You know, I really should release a book on man management because I feel like I'm an expert at it. And just as I exit the tactic screen to make those substitutions, Rafinha got the ball in the box and then fired into the top corner to make it 1-1. That is winger Rafinha, not central midfielder Rafinha. And also what's more frustrating is the fact that I found out that's his first goal of the season. It's taken until mid-January for him to score his first league goal of the season. This team really is tragic. It really is. There were a couple more changes I needed to make and we decided to bring on Tyler Roberts for Patrick Bamford who did fuck all all match. Uh, and then Petr Sebcic came on at right wing uh, to replace Jack Harrison and I moved Rafinha to the left wing. And once again, as I came out of the tactics screen, we got another highlight and a uh, ball into the box found this way to Robin Cock, but his header hit the bar and then it bounced out. And just when I thought we were getting on top in the match, uh, with five minutes left on the clock, Emerson Royale then broke into the box, played the ball across for Richardson and then make it 2-1. I actually hate this. I actually hate this team. And just when I thought we were dead and buried, and that was it, we were going to lose the Spurs at home. Tyler Roberts got down the left-hand side, put a wonderful ball in the box for Ryan Gravenberch to play across for substitute Petr Sevchig to equalise at the death. Once again, another proudy masterclass. Two substitutes and a new signing combined to get us an equalise against Spurs at home. And that is also a Spurs team that are struggling this year. But, 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 let's not put down my achievements just yet. And now we'll move into our game against Sheffield United in the FA Cup. And I can't wait. Uh, I, you know, it's a uh, chance to redeem myself. Let, let's go with that. I, I've had so many chances to redeem myself. And now this is like, the, what, the eighth chance I've had to redeem myself. And now we move into our second match against Sheffield United in the FA Cup replay. And I have made a couple of changes to the side. We will stick with the 4-3-3 formation. Uh, that we played against Spurs and got that 2-2 draw in. We've made two changes to the back line with Junior Firpo and Diego Lorente coming in and playing on the left side of the defence. It means I'll push Robin Cock into the defensive midfield position with Ryan Gravenberch and Stuart Dallas playing in the central midfield positions. I have swapped around Rafinha and Jack Harrison, uh, so they're going to be playing on the other side of the wing that they did in the Spurs game. And Patrick Bamford keeps his place up front despite the fact that he has not really bagged for me this season. Like, I, I think he's our third top goal scorer and he's got like one goal. So if I do get sacked, then I'll know the reason why. It's because we didn't score enough goals. Yeah, it's probably my fault that I didn't bring in any strikers then in both transfer windows. Now, we do have to put things right in this match because uh, we probably got lucky we are getting a nil-nil draw at Bramwell Lane. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, put things right. Let's get ourselves into the fourth round. So let's give me at least another extra game in charge of Leeds. Quite literally, every game counts at the moment. We did start off the game on the front foot, and uh, Diego Lorente then ran at the Sheffield United defence, uh, played the ball out wide uh, to Jamie Shackleton, who then got a lovely cross into the box of Patrick Bamford uh, to double his goal tally for the season. God, do you know how bad that sounds? He's doubled his goal tally in January. We just had a player last match who scored his first league goal of the season, and now we've got someone who's now scored their second goal of the season. And if you're going to ask me, what do you do in training, Proudy? I mean, I literally don't know. Like, I, I literally don't know. There weren't too many highlights in this match, but Rafinha did drive at the Sheffield United defence uh, later on into the half, but then uh, forced a good save from Wes Fotheringham in the goal. I mean, if he can not repeat the performance he did in episode 5, that would be great. But there was no time for us to get complacent, and Sanderberg then put the ball into the box for Armando Brogia uh, to head at Melier and uh, force a good save from him. Uh, obviously, you know, we can't get complacent. We are 1-0 up, but like there's every chance Sheffield United can score. Mainly down to the fact we can't defend. But we did go into halftime on the right side of the scoreline, uh, uh, leading 1-0 at the break. Uh, and it would be good to get a few more goals in the second half and then put Sheffield United to bed. And once again, I don't know why I'm speaking like a manager that knows what he's doing. Sheffield United inevitably got a big chance in the second half. And George Bulldog played in, in the die, but then he forced a fantastic save from Melier uh, to keep us in front. With about 20 minutes left on the clock, JB Shackleton got the ball again on the right-hand side and played a wonderful ball over the top for substitute Daniel James to run through a goal and then chip the goal goalkeeper and to double our lead i'm not getting ahead of myself i'm not getting ahead of myself but i think we might win this game and to be fair not really much else happened in the match and uh, we ended up seeing out the 2-0 win we into the fa cup fourth round can't really complain i think we'll be all right now i think we're actually going to win a load of games now 